Welcome to worship with the people of Lombard Christian Reformed Church. I'm Jessica Bongiorno, and these are my sisters, Annie and Kayla. Let us bow down before the triune God in praise and offering. All who come from near and far, come and worship. All who thirst for God, come and worship. All whose hearts overflow with gratitude and hope, come and worship. All whose hearts may be filled with despair or grief, come and worship. All who come with doubts or fears, come and worship. All who come to this place with eager expectation, come and worship. Through the grace of God's Holy Spirit, come and worship Christ, our exalted King. For he is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. I believe in the sun, I believe in the risen one, I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. God says, I am the Lord your God who snatched you out of Satan's hand and set you free. Don't make anything more important in your life than the God of the Bible. 
Don't make toys or fun or experiences or people take the place of God. All good things come from the Lord, not from getting things or getting the applause of people. Don't use God's name unless you are praising or praying to the Lord, talking about God or sharing God's good news with someone else. Speak only about God as the Bible tells you about the Lord, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sunday is different from any other day. It is for worshiping God, sharing life with God's people, resting in our Heavenly Father's provision and grace, and serving others in the name of Jesus. Your mother and father are special gifts from God. You are to respect them, pray for them, honor their witness of God's love in your life, and obey them as they teach you these commandments of God. Don't hurt others with your actions, words, or thoughts. Don't use others for your own wants or needs. Don't take what belongs to someone else, their toys, their work, their fun, their peace, their freedom, or even their test answers. Don't say untrue things about others, and don't abuse the truth to hurt others with things like gossip or being judgmental. Don't want to be like another person. Have what they have, do what they do, like what they like. You are a unique creation redeemed for God's glory. That's your purpose in life. So be content with what God gives you. So love God with all that you are and all that God made you to be. You show this best by loving your neighbor and serving her or him to bring out God's best in her or him. Travel me with a melody. Surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my I've been born again to your family, your blood flows through my veins, I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God, I'm no longer a slave I'm no longer 
longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child. Listen now to the word of God as we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus. We read today from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and verses 13 through 26. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord. Here's a photo of the Sheldon Peck homestead in Lombard. After the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850, this homestead and farm became a refuge along the Underground Railroad. Sheldon Peck hid those escaping slavery before arranging for them to move on toward Canada and their freedom. The journey from slavery to freedom was a perilous one. It took the sacrificial risk of many along the way in order to set the slaves free. This home reminds us of a dark and sinful past in America, but also of the holy freedom of self-sacrifice that is willing to lay down one's life for the good of another. Sheldon Peck's homestead along the Underground Railroad also reminds us of the cross and God's self-giving love in Christ that transforms us from spiritual slavery to freedom. A woman named Katie tells her emancipation story of that time when she was set free from being a slave. One day the horn sounded, bringing everyone in from the field, and a strange man gathered them all together and said, Today is the 4th of June, 1865. And I want you to remember this date because today you are free. I want you to understand you don't have to get up and go by the horn no more. You is your own bosses now. And you don't have to have no passes to go and come. Katie shares her reaction. None of the group knew what to do, where to go. We didn't know how to be free. 
stories of freedom like this one remind us how precious a gift it is to be free, yet how fragile, how hard to hold on to and to live out. It takes a while for us to get used to being free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. This is a surprising verse to us. We wouldn't first think of freedom as a result of the cross and empty tomb of Jesus and new life in Christ. We might expect the verse to read, for going to church, Christ has set us free. Or it is for following the rules that Christ has set us free. Or we're tempted to want the verse to say, it is for prosperity, Christ has set us free. Or for my own happiness, Christ has set me free. But the verse doesn't say any of these things. It says it is for freedom Christ has set us free. The first followers of Jesus to hear these words were suspicious of freedom, thinking they had to perform some religious accomplishments to be accepted and belong. They were being pressured into the religious rite of circumcision by someone who said, if you really want to be right with God, you have to do this. The next generation of Christians would read this while facing persecution, on the run, suffering, and being threatened. Not the sort of freedom or free life we think of when we think of freedom. So how about us? How free are we? Some who don't have their neighbor's well-being in mind tell us this pandemic is an excuse for the government to take our freedoms away. But we live in a long line of those who bow to Jesus as the King of Kings, who have and even continue today to practice faith without the rights and freedoms to do so. Our spiritual freedom doesn't depend on earthly freedom. It transcends earthly freedoms. Did you wake up this morning thankful to God because you are free? If you call yourself a Christian and someone asks you to describe what being a Christian is all about, do you answer that a Christian is free? Probably not the first thing we think of. Jesus has accomplished this great thing for us, this transformation. Do we know what that is? Do we live it out? We receive freedom as a gift of God. The chapter starts with, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And the old quote reminds us, freedom is never given, it is won. And that is what Christ alone has done, won our freedom. A simple way to think of it is as freedom from something and freedom for something. Because Jesus gave his life for you, taking our sins to the cross, we have freedom from sin. All the damage sin does to our life with God and our identity and belonging as God's children is suffered and buried by Jesus. So now we are forgiven. We are made right again. Who am I? A child of God's promise. Brothers and sisters to Jesus. We belong to the family of God. We are declared righteous, made for holiness. That's our freedom from sin. Those regrets that stay with you, Christ has set you free. They have no say about today and tomorrow because this is the day the Lord has made. So rejoice and be glad in it. Be kind to yourself, sings Andrew Peterson. How does it end when the war that you're in is just you against you against you? Got to learn to love your enemies, too. You can't expect to be perfect. It's a fight you've got to forfeit. You belong to me, whatever you do. So lay down your weapon, darling. Take a deep breath and believe that I love you. Be kind to yourself. For the Lord is kind and full of compassion. You are free from guilt and shame. 
Sin doesn't have to have the last word in your life anymore. Not even today. We are set free from it. We are, are also set free for something. We are freed for self-giving love. Galatians 5 goes on to say, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. So freedom has a purpose. And that purpose can never just be happiness. Sure, resurrection reality brings a joy and a holy happiness that fulfills our deepest longings. But pleasures or feelings of happiness were never meant to sustain us. We are made and redeemed to reflect the image of God, who is the creator and providential Lord, King and Savior. This true God is triune, living in perfect unity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Human beings are not just personal, private seekers of delight and pleasure. Our purposes and meaning aren't within us. They are found in Christ as we share his love that lays down life for the broken and the one in need. Freedom's meaning is found in the heart and character of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. Freedom is by Christ, and it is in Christ. So freedom is not an exalting of oneself, or an idolatry of one's being able to make choices, but a freedom from ourselves and our broken and empty souls. We follow Christ whose joy in the cross reforms our experiences of contentment and satisfaction in obedience and submission of the self to God. It's there that liberty is experienced. If we think about it for a moment, our best moments of freedom happen when we rest in knowing Jesus is with us, when like him we are giving ourselves away, loving others with that Christ-like loving service that acts in the joy of being a blessing. Paul's words here in Galatians make sense to us. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be freed but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another in, uh, humbly in love. Freedom isn't indulgence. It is loving service offered in the name of Christ. When you gave up that evening in in order to help someone out, when you gave up that 20 for this needy cause, when you gave up what you wanted in an attempt to serve another, when you let go of measuring your life by how much you don't or can't have, when you gave up that judgmentalism or bitterness and forgave, those were moments of freedom. They were kingdom moments. And the Father held you still. You saw that those acts were good and rejoiced in the presence of Christ even if that act was costly or difficult for you. Because I don't have to measure up to what others think life should be for. Because I don't have to somehow fit into the American way of success and accomplishment and more. Because I can trust that my life matters to God even in my sickness or limitation so that nothing is a waste in his providential hands now, I am free to serve, free to be a giver, free to be strong enough to sacrifice and do without, free to enjoy life and nature despite illness or limitation, free for service, free for all this, and not just free from sin. 
I know we've been raised in the language and in an unholy culture of freedom that makes us think of things totally different from the biblical meaning of freedom. Some think freedom means doing whatever I want, whenever I want to. But that's not being free. That's being wild. And there's a difference. When you see a place with no fences, what you see is the wilderness. If we choose to live that way, we too will be in the wilderness. We may even forfeit our freedom. So our freedom will take some discipline. Verse 19 goes on to say the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't these words sound like a contradiction? And the chapter begins by saying, be free, and ends by saying, don't do this or that. What this is, is a warning. A warning to us because freedom can be lost. Paul talks about that when he counsels these Galatian Christians to refrain from the religious rites of circumcision. That pressure on them stands for all the ways we pressure ourselves and one another in the ways of the flesh. The flesh standing for all those activities we try to accomplish in order to save ourselves or to get the good life or inner peace for ourselves by our own efforts. Just traps us in selfishness and judgment, far from grace, far from peace, the peace that Jesus gives. Verse 16, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what's contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. He's saying that the most free among us are the most disciplined. When God first freed his people, he gave them the Ten Commandments, not to earn their identity in life with God, but because now they were God's people and now they were free to live with and for God. In our longing to be free from sickness, from fear, from boredom, from vanity, from inept and ineffective faith, from the anger or fear or judgment that sticks to us, we remember that Jesus is our exodus. Jesus sacrificing to break the chains that enslave us. Jesus defeating the taskmaster. Easter means that we are set free for God. What Jesus accomplished by the cross is as momentous as the exodus, as being set free from slavery. Easter means our exodus. Do we recognize that without the cross, we too are in bondage, like Israel was in Egypt, captives and slaves to the pharaohs of this age? We are slaves in Egypt and yearn to be liberated. The Exodus story is the story of being freed from slavery. Israel's journey from Egypt to the promised land formed a new people, a people set free to serve God and give the Lord glory. People were no longer regarded as work units or, or brick makers or faceless, nameless captives. They were given an identity, God's people and purpose for God's glory. The empty tomb makes this our reality today as followers, as disciples of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7 says, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. The exodus initiated, completed. His death and resurrection have set us free. 
when Israel was set free from Pharaoh, God led the people to Mount Sinai. There God gave Israel her new identity as a free people in the covenant promises of new life as a liberated people God gave Israel the Ten Commandments. Following, obeying, striving, setting our minds and hearts to these commandments was a sign of freedom. Now, we don't always think of obedience as freedom. And of course, down through the ages, tyrants and despots have coerced subjects to do their bidding. But here, the good God, whose love endures forever, speaks, and the first thing he says to this new liberated people is, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The message. When we exercise obedience to God, we are disciplined in freedom. After gratitude, our next faith exercise in freedom is applying the Ten Commandments and the love commands of Christ to our roles, relationships, and responsibilities. How will you exercise that precious freedom today? The Holy Spirit counsels us that it is the disciplined one who is set free. So to a free people, the Lord gives his commands. Love God, love your neighbor, Love one another, the church. And since I am free from having to prove myself, free from having to secure that I get what I want and things go my way, free from having to make sure results are guaranteed, then I am free to love as Jesus loved me, relying on his blessings, patient in hope during times of trial. Let us celebrate our exodus this way today. One morning as I left my house for the church study, I saw some people out jogging. This was early in the morning, and these runners were not only already up, they were running, even in the cold and snow. Discipline. They were doing what others wouldn't choose to do in order to become who they desired to be, healthy and fit and well. Sports or music, mathematics or science, the arts, even 12-step programs all teach us that only the most disciplined are truly free. The gift of freedom must be nurtured, taken care of, helped to flourish. Disciplining ourselves for freedom will mean to turn away from the flesh of doing things my way and for me, to turn towards the habits and heart of Christ. Worship and prayer, obedience and service, Generosity and joy in the day all move us to act thankfully in praise to the triune God and act lovingly for our neighbor's welfare. An article on the Boundless website for young adults observes, even in Christian circles, we seem to be constantly meditating on the no. But let's meditate on that yes for a little bit. That's a nod toward freedom. Instead of focusing how to say no, even for God, how about we look for opportunities as free people to say yes for Christ? Instead of looking for what I can get away with, I seek for ways to live in the joy of my Savior. The transforming power of Christ's death and rising from the dead reveals that belief in God is not merely to have us obey a new set of rules. Instead, it remakes us into a new sort of person, a people who are free in Christ to follow this life-changing way of the cross and resurrection. We practice this freedom now in order to testify to the perfect freedom and the joy to come. We long for the day when we are welcomed into eternal life, our yielding before the King liberates us finally and fully from death, mourning, crying, and pain. And what a day that will be. Amen.
resurrection reminds that every difficulty only lasts for so long. Three days until the earth gave way and then power exceeded law and mystery overcame expectation. Nature has nothing more to grasp, not even earthly bodies, for Christ has spoken and history has been shaken. There must be no doubt and no turning back in this. The dead has been made alive and the past can no longer claim our future. Brothers and sisters, it is finished. Through Christ, the victory is ours, both now and forever. Amen. As we come to God now in prayer, let's remember the promises given to us in our baptism. And now in thanks, let's bow before the Lord and kneel before our Savior in prayer. Glorious Lord of life, mighty and powerful God, we praise you, we thank you for not only telling us but showing us how very much you love us. Enough to be born into our world as one of us, to live among us, to walk beside us, heal us, teach us, and sacrifice yourself for us in order to set us free from sin and for kingdom service. We praise you for your self-giving love that saves sinners like us, your self-giving that runs toward all the hurting places of our world, that strengthens the weak and downtrodden, gives courage to the frightened, hope to the desperate, and resilience to the weary, your self-giving that reveals a vision of a world where your will is done here on earth as it is in heaven the transforming power of your self-giving love that inspires us to love you in return with all our heart and soul and strength and mind, to love our neighbors as ourselves and to love one another, the church family, as you have loved us. We rejoice that you gather and hold us all in your wide, warm, compassionate embrace and claim us by name as your beloved children. During this time of pandemic, Father, that has radically changed so many lives, we pray for your protection for all our essential workers, for healing for those who are ill, peace for the dying, comfort for those who mourn, serenity for all who are anxious about the future, and wisdom for those who govern. We ask your blessing on your church of all the ages, races, ethnic groups, generations, economic experience, in oppression and in freedom, Lord Jesus, that we may be your faithful followers, proclaiming the good news of your saving grace and 
forgiving mercy in all that we think and feel and say and do. Holy Spirit, counsel those who are looking for light in these dark times and bring them to a saving trust in the Savior. We pray for the Dominguez family. They have extended family members who have contracted the virus. We pray for Neil Rylersdam, a former interim pastor here at Lombard, who is being treated for a serious infection. Be with his wife, Glenda, also is not allowed to be with him due to the restrictions today. Continue to strengthen Gladys Lubin in her rehab. We thank you that Nick Tooney is home and gaining strength. Bring hope and strength to Amy Weinert, Ginny Jupp, Rick Hopp, Jeannie Weiner, Lucy Mikus, George Taminga, Pat Serrano, and Hank De Bruin. Bless all those with ongoing chronic conditions and be their faithful friend. Bring relief to those who suffered loss in last week's tornadoes throughout the southern states. For first responders and frontline healthcare workers, especially in the epicenters of infection, God, reinforce their ranks and strengthen them with supernatural energy. For companies with the ability and the mandate to manufacture much needed protective equipment for our frontline healthcare workers, God, establish the work of their hands. For nursing homes, rehabilitation centers, in other long-term care facilities, God, encourage the lonely residents and strengthen the staff members who help them. Prevent further spread of the infection and comfort families who can no longer visit their loved ones. For educators forced to adapt curricula to online learning and for students forced to exercise more autonomy, God, make homes a place of curiosity inquiry and study. Give special help to children without regular access to the internet and other digital tools, and also those with special needs. For those tasked with governing locally and nationally, Jesus, you are the King of Kings. By your spirit, guide our representatives toward mercy and justice. We pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you again for your continued financial support of Lombard CRC and its ministries. You can continue to donate your tithes and offerings by mailing them to church or through the GiveLify app. Today's offering is for the Timothy Tuition Assistance Fund. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Timothy Christian Schools and for the blessing of Christian education. Please give the teachers creativity as they develop virtual lesson plans and give the students patience and understanding as they learn. Please bless the funds that we collect today and help them to be used to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh Lord my God, when I annoy some wonder, consider all the world's thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my How great thou art, how 
great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and lead me home, what joy shall fill my heart and I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great the art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul We've enjoyed this time together, remembering who we are in Jesus Christ. Remember that we are connected even if we don't see each other physically, for we are joined in union with Christ and one another by faith. So now receive God's blessing as we go into another week that may hold all sorts of things that we don't know, but we know that God the Father holds them and each one of us in his hands. Receive his blessing. May God go before you to lead you. May God go behind you to guard you. May God go beneath you to support you. May God go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. Let the blessing of God come upon you today. Sisters and brothers, do not be afraid. Amen. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory now and forever, now and forever, amen. To God be the glory, now and forever, now and forever, amen. My friends, may you grow. Knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God.